What is up, everybody? Mr. Purse here. Welcome to our cram session number three. This is not all inclusive, but this is units five and six. Quick 10, 12 minute video. Five things you need to know. 1750 to 1900. Watch this the night before, a couple days before the AP exam. Um, just as a quick refresher and reminder. First thing we're going to do here, first thing you should know is the Enlightenment and political revolutions. The Enlightenment is a movement that took place in Western Europe and North America in the late 1600s through the 1700s. And basically it flips everything that's been going on up to this point throughout much of the world. Um, kings believe that they got their power from a higher authority. In Europe, it was called divine right of kings, that that's where they got their power from. The Enlightenment starts questioning that and says, maybe we shouldn't get our power, maybe leaders shouldn't get their power from God, but instead get their power from the people and the people should give maybe give permission what's called the consent of the governed now the enlightenment is all based on natural laws the idea that naturally you should be born with certain liberties or freedoms and if you know the declaration of independence it's life liberty and pursuit of happiness but the idea is that there are certain freedoms that we should be guaranteeing as a government to our citizens now there are times where citizens should have their rights limited and that is called the social contract when you limit people's rights in order to promote freedom fire in a movie theater bomb on an airplane are two examples this idea of the enlightenment which has separation of powers freedom of speech freedom of religion you know search and seizure and quartering troops there's a whole bunch of pieces to this enlightenment and some really really smart guys and a female or two um, who are going to write during this period who really inspire revolutions. So the Enlightenment, the key of the Enlightenment is it's going to inspire revolutions and it really inspires a lot of our thought, especially in the United States today, about freedom and, and the right of the individual. So there's four different revolutions that are going on in this period. I have all four here. I don't want to go through each one, but if you want to pause this and take some notes, you can see we got the American Revolution, the French, the Haitian, and Latin America. The least important of these, the part that, the one that you really don't need to know, but I put on here anyway, is the French. AP World and AP or history teachers love the French Revolution, but you really don't need to know that for the AP exam. What you do need to know is what caused the American, the Haitian, and the Spanish Latin American. And generally speaking, they're all caused by the Enlightenment, by the other revolutions at the same time period. Because if you look at the dates, we're all late 17, early 1800s. They're all caused by some kind of unfair system, whether it's unfair taxes, unfair social classes, slavery, um, and some type of issue that arose. So that's the issue with these really in the impact of all these it's kind of an overall arching theme here is they all all of these places gain some type of independence and create some type of democracy but there are they don't really radically change the society generally the people who are like second tier who lead this revolution put themselves as first tier and when they become first tier they still discriminate against everyone else so for example in the american revolution all these founding fathers create these ideas of democracy and independence but women don't have any rights non-property owners men don't have any rights and of course we have slavery that exists until the mid 1800s so like it's all about freedom and independence but like not much changes what you do need to know and what the ap world does want you to be aware of is there are three documents that they want you to connect to the enlightenment and these revolutions which hopefully you read or which is the declaration of independence the declaration of the rights of man and citizen which is in france and bolivar's letter from jamaica which talks about his ideas of creating equality and freedom and trying to unite the um, Latin American people into one country. So that's this piece right here. There's a lot of moving pieces um, that's going on here. Number two things, so we have the Enlightenment political revolutions. The second thing we have going on in this time period is the Industrial Revolution. It starts in Great Britain. It's going to spread to Western Europe and North America by the mid 1800s. And if you don't know for the rest of this whole entire course up to this after this point, this industrial revolution, if you are industrialized, you have a tremendously large advantage over everyone else moving forward. So from, and that goes all the way through today. Um, the causes of industrial revolution, you really need three things. There's more than just these three that's gonna cause it in Britain. Um, but the three things you need is you need people to work in the factories and to create and make stuff. You need capital or money and you need natural resources. Um, the uh, little contextualization is the population has increased in Britain from the Columbian Exchange in the previous time period. We have money flowing into Great Britain from the age of exploration from the previous time period. And Britain is loaded with natural resources, coal and iron deposits, and it makes it so they are kind of ripe to industrialize. We're going to have new technologies from this, factory systems, um, steam engines, telegraph lines, a whole bunch of stuff. We also have pollution that comes with that. We also have a new social class structure that's going to exist where we have a new groups of people who are working class 
Um, so before it was all, it was farmers and then you have like nobles and merchants, but now we have this middle class who are the factory owners and we have, or the investors in the factories, and then we have the working class where the people, and these are totally new social class structures. Um, just a quick little thing here. This is the GDP percentage, great chart here. Um, and this shows you that how much of an advantage the industrialized countries are going to have. If you look here where the industrial revolution is, where the United States and how they increase their gross domestic product as well as here. And if you look at what happens to China and India who are not industrialized during this period and how their GDP goes down. Um, and you can see when China successfully industrializes in the late 70s. That's another story for another time. We also have the impact of a lot of this industrial revolution and enlightenment stuff on social movements. Um, something that can be easily overlooked, but AP World likes this kind of stuff. One, don't forget, we end forced labor in this time period. So by the mid 1800s, we chattel slavery has ended due to the promotion of abolitionist movements. So ab abolishing slavery. We also end serfdom in Russia as they attempt to industrialize. Um, that happens in 1861. So both of these are in the mid 1800s. We also have a women's rights movement that's gaining steam um, where there's a push for women's suffrage. So suffrage, if you don't know that word, is not a bad thing. Suffrage is the right to vote. And there's this push for women's suffrage. That won't happen in most countries until the 1900s. But there is this push during this period based on these enlightenment ideas and based on a lot of these revolutions where women are going to start saying kind of, what about us? We have workers' rights and labor unions that are going to rise. Labor unions are when workers organize together in order to promote better working conditions and pay. Um, and they decide and they say that we're going to vote as a block to vote people in, like vote together to vote people in who are going to promote our ideas and what we want in terms of better conditions. And then also we're going to just limit child labor. Child labor in Europe, um, we have people working in mines and kids working in factories and horrible conditions. And that's going to be limited. Um, by the end of this time period as a result of these enlightenment and industrial revolution ideas. We also have imperialism. Whoa, my face is all over this map. Um, we also have imperialism going on. Boom, now I'm over here. We also have imperialism going on. So you should know the causes of imperialism, nationalism, um, economic motivations to get natural resources and to sell our products in bigger markets than just Britain, religion, so spread of Christianity, and social Darwinism, that belief that white people or the lighter your skin, the more superior you are, and it's your God-given duty and right and, you know, Darwinistic principles to go and conquer the weak people, kind of what we see in nature. Um, this is the racist side of things. So the, this imperialism is going to lead the Europeans to go out and conquer the world minus Latin America. Latin America is kind of our exception as the United States economically imperializes Latin America. And if you don't know what that means, go back and watch one of the other videos. And we have all of these areas that are going to be conquered during this period. The main leader of imperialism in terms of conquering the most places is Britain because they were the first to industrialize. And then we see France kind of at the second. So we got Africa here, but don't ignore Southeast Asia and South Asia. We have India is going to be conquered by the British, which is going to lead to rebellion, Sepoy Rebellion, um, and also Southeast Asia. This area is huge because people are still trying to get to China to trade with China. As the Europeans are expanding industrially and conquering places and imperializing them, other places, other empires, our gunpowder empires from the previous time period, um, are going to try and reform themselves. And they're going to try and reform themselves to industrialize. So we're going to see Japan try and industrialize with the Meiji Restoration. The Ottomans try and industrialize with the Tanzimat reforms. Russia and serfdom. Um, China has the self-strengthening movement. And by doing these different things, they're trying to catch up to the West. But it really doesn't work in most countries. The only successful non-Western country to industrialize is Japan. Um, and just one thing that they like you to know is that Russia and Japan are state-sponsored Industri or industrialization or these reforms and they're going to try and have the government promote and pump money into building factories and new industrializing as opposed to what we see in western europe which is private investors through capital um last piece and this i'm going to come back over here this is the last piece and this is really i you might have ignored this or you might not remember this but like this is the this is like they ap world loves this topic because movement of people is like a huge thing and like interaction of people so this is the last one which is migration we're going to see a huge migration around the world during imperialism so as europeans go out and conquer a colony those colonists maybe want to go to the mother country they might want to travel to another part or another colony within that empire so we have people moving because of imperialism we have better steamships and communication so people are able to travel easier easier so since they can travel easier they can go more places we see a large number of people leaving 
unindustrialized countries like China and traveling to, for example, the United States, we see this movement here out of China is kind of a weird map. So people are moving out of China and going to California, moving out of China, going to the Caribbean. Um, we have people leaving Europe, which um, as, as it gets kind of cramped, to go to the United States for more opportunity, Ellis Island and Italians and Germans. Um, we have a large uh, European population going to South America for more opportunity. So the idea is if you can there's these push factors that push people out of countries, discrimination, not enough job opportunity, famine, and there's things that pull people into countries, which is usually job opportunities, increased land, um, religious freedom. One kind of side note to all this is there is indentured servitude in the United States, um, especially they are going to promote people to come from China until 1882 with the Chinese Exclusion Act, um, where they ban Chinese people from coming to the United States. But indentured servitude where someone is going to promise you to pay for your passage and house you and feed you, but you have to work for five, seven years to work off your debt. Um, it's a type of forced labor. Um, it's a voluntary forced labor, but uh, people are going to be treated very horribly in indentured servitude. So that's units five and six. That's 1750 to 1900. That's a lot of information. If you need to go back, watch some of the more detailed videos. But if it's the night before, man, this is it. Hopefully you remember this stuff. I'm out.